put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. Elysium Move You. Max is just an ordinary guy with a car theft or you know, Grand Theft Auto, I suppose, or two in his past. And he lives in the barely habitable earth with mindless drones acting as police and, you know, nearly impossible to get a job. You're treated like crap at a job. The rich elite have it far better. It's, but anyway, I was, that's, that's reality, I was supposed to, yes, I had to, anyway. The, in, in this world, there is, of course, one dream, to reach Elysium. So titled, because, yeah, I don't know, pretentious Greek allegory titles or you know, it scored Prometheus some points, so the Blomkamp decided, Blomkamp, anyway, yeah, Neil decided he'd give it a toss to. So, yes, Elysium of the, you know, Wikipedia informs me that that is the Greek version of paradise, basically, where only the gods could enter and only, or, and or, you had to be chosen by the gods, and in this case it's of course the rich instead. There is you know, no pollution, no disease, everything is you know, perfect there. And there's, it's, it's just the 1% who live there. And Max has had a dream of getting there since he was a child. And when he becomes fatally ill and has five days to live, he kind of puts a rush on this dream of his and tries desperately to get there, preferably in less than two hours, because who wants an action movie that's more than two hours? This is supposed to be just summer blockbuster fun, yes. And indeed, the, the movie does clock in at an hour and 42 minutes, not counting the end credits. So mission accomplished there. And of course, getting there won't be easy as he will have to contend with the Ice Queen of Jodie Foster's character, the Secretary of Defense, who makes up probably the only truly bad performance in the movie. I, I can't quite... There, there are some Shatnery pauses in her dialogue, and it's just, it's, it's overly hammy. And uh, the the she she employs some rather brutal men, the mercenaries that do shady work for her in order to keep people away from Elysium. Elysium itself is actually not a place we spend an awful lot of time in the movie, and 
that's that is a good thing because it really isn't about it's it's more about the the sort of the divide between the people than this you know yeah this this actual place and frankly as you're watching a movie you don't really you're not sitting there checking your watch going when are they going to get there already it yeah the it's it's this thing of building to it and of making us want it making us look forward to it with that said the the actual third act of the film is one of the worst portions of the movie it's it's where it gets the most generic and uh, frankly downright predictable at points which really i mean okay so the guy's only made two movies so far but really the thing that you can really see with the, this and district nine is you don't really know what's going to happen. You, you, in, in part, this is an action movie, but you're not sitting there guessing when the action is going to occur. I, I recently watched The Wolverine, and I like that movie quite a bit and stand by everything I said about it, but it also does have a fairly typical approach to this action movie thing of, you know, so and so much time passes, okay, let's have an action scene of some kind, you know, some somehow, some way, some people are going to have a direct conflict with each other. There's going to be guns, there's going to be fighting, something, but, you know, the audience is going to get impatient otherwise, is, is the, you know, guiding logic there and with this you just never know there are times that you really think you know are, are going to turn into action scenes and then there are you know action scenes that sort of almost you know they, they, they really grab you by surprise I'm, I, I was almost gonna say that they come out of nowhere but it's not really quite that it's just that the the actual build-up is very is sufficiently subtle and I realize this is something that I tend to chide the Paul W.S. Anderson for and the thing is here it's actually done well it's it's not anticlimactic like when he does it, it, it quite the opposite it's it's very effective and again it, 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 re, you know see district 9 for other examples of how it's, it's just it, it can be very sudden or it can be you know there can be these situations where you maybe think you know is this going to turn into an and it doesn't quite and yeah it just it really works and in general, the, the pacing is, is solid. The direction here is better than the writing. I think maybe it would be good if Neil Blomkamp got a, you know, a writer or at least someone, you know, to help out with the script some. Especially there are times where the dialogue gets pretty bleh. Especially a lot of the the rich people jerk dialogue is really it's it's both ham fisted and just really awkward and just yeah yeah it it's just not that good anyway the but but yeah the the actual storytelling, the the pace it's kept to, and the way the story unfolds. A Blomkamp is excellent at crafting a world that feels real and almost not even drawing us into it, just letting us absorb it. It just 
we don't even feel like we have to be told this is this is this and this you know, that is that. It's just and and it's literally I I noticed it as being from the very first frame, like just the opening shots. It it doesn't feel like imagine this place. It's just well that's that's us. That's now. It's it, yeah the the slums. Uh, you know, look, they they do have this slight. You know, there there are differences between the the slums of the movie and the slums of real life. For example, there's you you see several actual skyscraper ruins, like, and and there's like, you know, if two skyscrapers are fairly close to each other, there might be like some kind of not, excuse me, not solid looking path between the two. Like, basically somebody knocked over a, a load-bearing... Yeah, anyway, thing between them and you can now, you know, walk between them so you don't have to go all the way down and you don't see, but these places probably do not have working elevators. And so, so it's, yeah, it's not the slums we already know that, you know, thankfully most of us have only seen on TV. It's, uh, most of us in the West, at, at least. It's, it, it just, it does feel like it's, the the slums that we already know and and we very quickly get to feeling like we live there and the, the this is less in in district 9 the actual the the stuff we see of how horrible the Aliens habit is almost suffocating. It's and I, I don't mean that in any kind of negative way, but it is it, it it doesn't it doesn't have a negative effect on it doesn't make the movie bad. It makes the movie highly effective. It's it's inescapable. You you can't watch District Nine and ignore that the these these aliens in spite of being you know fictitious have it horribly and then you know when you come out and say well these aliens don't exist then you you know open a history book and then you see oh wow we actually have done all this stuff to people th you know throughout history you know not, not all of it to all of these different groups but Everything you see in District Nine has been done to some group in in history that and and it was just accepted. It was just well, that's how it is. I mean, they're not like us, and in this, it's just less focused like that. It it almost feels like this is the slightly TV edit edited version of, you know, of, of District 9, like that. It, it feels like, it, you know, maybe some executive <laughs> sat down with Neil and said, could you tone it down just a shade? We, we will give you more money. And it seems like Neil sort of went along with it, which is not at all to say that he, his fingerprints are all over this thing. And it is a, a glorious, little piece of evidence. I think I'm mixing metaphors here. But really, the, the, it's sort of, it's very present in the first third of the film, but then the film kind of doesn't, you know, it, it softens its grip on, on that. And it, I, I do kind of wish that it would maintain it. And that's not merely because of my 
fondness of BDSM, but I find that the, the film kind of loses something once we lose this, you know, thesaurus. Yeah, once... Anyway, as, as examples, and in the early portions of the film, we see Max go to work, and it's like, you know, he, he's... He gets sarcastic with these earlier mentioned robot cops, and they beat him up and or offer him medication because if if you are you know you, you see some of it in the trailer you know you're you know what was the, I I detect a, a you know a heightened stress level would you like a pill is is you know because and and that is very much yeah it's over medicated western world today you know you don't seem happy, you should take a pill. You know, it, it's not that you have some underlying issue that you need to, no, 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 pill, it'll solve everything. And yeah, getting beaten up by cops, I mean, you, you basically have a scene of stop and frisk in, in early on in this thing, so that's, yeah, it, it, it gets the message across. Although, unfortunately, Blomkamp doesn't completely depend on the satire as he also, you know, gets up and preaches uh, quite a bit. It, it's get, it gets pretty heavy-handed at, at points. And, uh, you know, as, I'm not saying I completely disagree as, as a bleeding heart live, but yeah, I can, I can definitely identify it and it, it, it makes perfect sense that it really bothers it it bothers me too i i don't i i may agree with it but i prefer for it to be more subtly communicated in the movie now anyway yes max is you know going to work getting beaten up for just nothing if he is like he has to work at this really crappy job where he you know could be fired and he literally is basically like building the stuff that, you know, he's building the robots that are keeping them down. So it's, it's really extra kind of, yeah, and it, he, yeah, he, he has this tiny crappy apartment and it has this, you know, kind of grimy, bleak look. You know, and in some ways it's actually similar to that recent remake of an 80s classic F the the title I can't quite recall but but anyway th yeah so we we do have Matt Damon doing another lib movie and Obama is no longer friends with him uh, evidently it, it actually it could have been Eminem if he just he demanded that the the movie be shot in Detroit, and the yeah, insert eight mile reference here. If the the the. I, I heard some comments that Damon t t scowls too much and he's not he doesn't bring too much to the role. I, I find that he makes Max quite charming and there's there's a sort of blue collar, you know, downtrodden but not without hope, not without a sense of humor. Like I said, he gets sarcastic with robots and he gets crap kicked out of him. He he hasn't given up. He 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 has the dream, and without you know, he's still pragmatic. Now the 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 movie very much shows that Blomkamp is indeed someone to keep an eye on in the future for sci-fi. It's 
you know, there, there really aren't very many names in the sci-fi cinematic genre that, yeah, are worth following currently, but he's, he's near the, the very top of that list, and we do see that District 9 was not just beginner's luck. It, it, he really has something to bring here. Now, this does have a lot of similarities to District 9, which part of what made that movie work so darn well is that it was so unexpected, it was so fresh. And this movie also takes some much more traditional paths and elements. In, in this, we are not following the bureaucrat who is helping keep the aliens down. In this, we are following one of the downtrodden, and we, we can tell right from the, the start, even if there wasn't the obvious voiceover and, and like, yeah, extremely obvious setup that this is going to be one of the, you know, action hero movie things with the the one guy who makes the huge difference and this whole thing. The violence in the movie is always brutal and short. It, it always hurts the, the, the audience. We, we can feel when bones break or yeah, it it's that that exoskeleton that you've seen. That thing isn't a suit, you know. He doesn't just put that on and then you know he can take it. No, no, no. That thing is grafted to him, and we get to see that in really unpleasant detail. So yeah, and. There, there are things like that in, in the movie. You, this is a hard R, and uh, yeah, it's it's two D and a hard R. So it's, Neil Blomkamp very much has the integrity as well. Again, more more money, but still, you know, there, there's still ambition. It's still very much a smart movie, and for the Hollywood that there is in the movie, it does also. It does some things that you wouldn't normally see in in a Hollywood movie, and again, see District Nine. Now, the I suppose that more or less covers about the action. I've already mentioned that it's. You know, you can't necessarily tell when there's going to be an action scene. The action has gotten some criticism of being like, you know, mind-numbing and the like. I, I honestly don't really see it. I don't... There's not too much. There's not too little. It never goes on for too long. There isn't a single action scene that should be cut or that doesn't add to that, you know, all of them raise the stakes and affect the status quo in very dramatic ways, you know, and help set up character to, to get things... Yeah, it, it, I don't particularly have any complaints about the action in, in any of those regards. The one thing I will say is there are a few times where the handheld camera gets disorienting and these these tend to be very brief it's it's like for just you know a, a single shot of the you know of, of a fight or something or maybe maybe two shots they accidentally gave it to the you know the guy having an epileptic fit on set and really that's it. it. It lasts very briefly and yeah. There are also a few bad uses of slow motion and yeah, it's I, th I think it's maybe like two 
two uses and it's just it's it's very brief and they just don't really don't co don't quite work the score is 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 done by a newcomer and it's, it's referred to as, as organic i honestly didn't notice it a huge amount but i'd say it's in it's it's the the good way of not noticing it too much it's it's inobtrusive but it helps establish atmosphere and that is something this movie has quite a bit of not not as much as this, this district 9 but yeah quite a lot of atmosphere the only times i really noticed it were when there there's a hacker in the movie and basically he has this you know he's he's the hacker so he he has this little lair and a lot of guys around and yeah it's an unpleasant place you know you you will never find a more wretched hive of scum and villainy and so we have this obnoxious techno that plays to kind of communicate that to to get that across to the audience and and when i say obnoxious techno i obviously as if there's any other kind flame away i don't mean that it it bothers you the audience the, the movie is never loud the movie is never like you know, there are those movies where you go in and you leave with a headache. I think I actually did have a light headache when I went into the movie and came out without any. So, I th yeah, I'm not saying the movie is literally, you know, headache medi medication. I'm saying it's really not at all going to... It didn't for me, and I tend to be extremely bad with these things that, you know, if, if something is loud and something, I'm gonna get a headache, but yeah, and, and again, that's not saying that the movie isn't fun and doesn't have you on the edge of your seat, you know, at times squirming, yeah. Now, I do have to talk just a little bit more about the hack, it's, you're always in for a treat when Hollywood does hacking. A trick or a treat, depending on how you look at it. I think I just messed that up. A treat or a trick. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> and and this movie does not disappoint in, in that regard. And the the one of the... Yeah, jo Jodie Foster may deliver the only truly bad performance as the Secretary of Defense, but this guy, the hacker, Spider, he's unintentionally funny a lot in his performance. He is just... Yeah, I, I think the the layer that he he has was actually just a big block of scenery and he chewed you know into it to to shape his lair because the the guy is he actually has like one bad leg so he he has this this not not cane but you know the, the it's, yeah thing and in spite of that he He's always moving and always like you know, and and he'll suddenly yell and he's he's a lot of fun. Yeah Now the I suppose This does bring back several you know District 9 Yeah, some of the District 9 crew we again have Shalto Copley, the the South African who, who also played Vickis in District Nine and Murdoch, the 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 crazy one in the A Team, and he's 
he's crazy in this, excuse me, this one too, but in the scary way, in the creepy way, not in the fun way. And yeah, he's, he's basically his hobo beard that might just make the Wolverine jealous is portraying this psycho mercenary who favors a katana and his face is just is not quite right so anyway Deadpool is working for the the Secretary of Defense and he yeah there's there's he's not well and you do get, for a while you don't quite know why, but then the film throws a big hint your way and you're like, oh, right. Yeah, it's, yeah. Now, the, the effects are excellent. This, of, of, yeah, of, of a lot of movies I've watched recently, this this might be the best looking the if effects wise there's just you can't point to anything in the movie and say well clearly that's an effect I mean okay you you can you you know what must be an effect but you're like but the, the, clearly that robot is there well yeah the the shuttle it's gotta be there because it looks so, it it just it all just fits into this, yeah, you, you cannot tell where reality ends and the CG takes over. And it's also, we, you know, like in District 9, we again have this technology which looks really, like, really cool and, and techy and such, but also kind of just slapped together where it's, it's just... You know, people built this, and it's just like it. It it's functional. You know, it we we slapped it together from this and that, and just yeah, it it really the movie feels real, and that's the the realism is very consistent. It, again, it there are some issues in the third act. But really, and in fact, the, the action sees a lot of realism. We have this... There, there are things that you kind of, you're used to action heroes shrugging off that happen in this film, and they actually have an impact. Like, and... Yeah, I don't really want to give too many details, but, but basically think of it as, you know, die hard, especially the first one. We're, we're talking that level. If something, you know, makes our hero bleed, he's gonna bleed because that's what you do. He's not just gonna shrug it off and be fine. The, there's, there's this, Lost my friend of thought. Anyway, the the yeah yeah actually the I already mentioned he has five days or he's gonna die from cancer and yeah we actually we we don't see a huge lot of effect from that but we do see some you know dude's gonna throw up. And it's, it, it, yeah, there, there is going to be some after effects. He's not just going to be fine for the whole movie. And it's also, it's, it's noteworthy, and reviewers have, of course, noted this, Max has a solid reason for wanting to go to release him. This is not just, you know, I, you know, I demand my people's freedom this is not this this I'm, I'm not saying that that's a bad motivation I'm saying it's it's something we've seen a lot and it's 
it's it's a cliche at this point. Even if it is a you know it's yeah it's it's gone from trope to cliche. And yeah, here we we actually have you know literally he has to go there. It's it's not this you know archetypal hero on the white knight who on the white steed who <laughs> on the white knight. There's an image who actually has to, you know, he, he just, he, his honor demands that he go and, and free the people. No, it's just, it's, it's a guy who's sick and the only way he's gonna get better is this, you know, insane, I mean, why else would you go and actually have an exoskeleton attached to you? Yeah, except I guess if you got really drunk. Now the we do of course get into some political and sociological issues. You know, the the, the such as healthcare with Elysium being the only place that you know has perfect cure-all technology. Uh, you know, the, the, the third world slums of Earth, which is now all of Earth, there are hospitals, but they, they can't just cure everything. You know, get into some immigration and, and class issues. Now, the the, the immigration is maybe especially, excuse me, the where the film is is heavy-handed and very naive in its its optimism, because where the where, where the healthcare and and you know class issues are are more. Yeah, more, more reflected in, more reflective of the real world, where really, if, if efforts were made to it, there really does, you know, people don't have to struggle as they do currently in order to make ends meet. It is perfectly plausible to pay more for the minimum wage, to actually give proper benefits to make sure that people can survive even a medical disaster which you know that's something both in this film and the real world you know this is especially true of America I'm not trying to bang on America for this particular review you know, I've, I've done that in others so but but yeah if you get you know one medical emergency might just, you know, ruin you or, and or kill you. And, and, yeah, the, the immigration issue is just more complicated than, in, in reality, than it is presented here in the movie. Now, I think that more or less covers, actually, the, the, the movie makes some very nice, subtle kind of allusions to th these, you know, very real issues of, of modern warfare. There is, you know, I've already mentioned that, you know, the police are robots. And, you know, much in the same way, the, yeah, the, the actual military hardware is also very automated and this kind of, you know, it, it goes into drone territory somewhat. And one very early scene has night vision used to sort of try to, you know, fr from above used to try to find some, some undesirables. And it is eerily reminiscent. Without being, you know, a, a, a 
a tasteless, just, you know, just tastelessly invoking that imagery. It, it is very reminiscent of these videos we've seen because of Bradley Manning and, you know, yeah, of, of US military just gunning down. Yeah, and it's, it's very effective. And again, without being, without being really on the nose and without, without taking that, you know, it, it, it feels earned for the film because it's not just saying that, you know, it's, it's, Man of Steel abuses the, the, images we have of 9-11 of to, you know, it's, it's uh, almost d disaster porn in, in that way without there being any real reason for it. It's just to, uh, yeah, it's, it's something that works, so they will do it, you know. And, it, yeah, here it actually is, it's part of the film's commenting on what the West is doing. The, you know, the, these issues, again, healthcare, immigration, and the, the class divide. And, yeah, the, the military, you know, U.S. military spending is a huge part of why there is such a divide, why there are so few funds to assist the, you know, the, the poor in the country. I think that pretty well covers everything. So yeah, it's, it's not District 9, but it's well worth watching. It's it it could use a little more humor, but it's exciting, it's engaging. Other than some issues in the third act, it really quite effectively just yeah, you you absorb it and you're just you're there and you don't really want to leave. The time flies by, and yeah, it's. I I am very much looking forward to seeing what else he comes up with. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.